Hello there. Welcome to the nth degree. Hey, Donna. Hi, Hi. Berlin. Hello to our audience. We're doing you a favor today, audience. We are actually turning on the recording before we say all the stuff and then turn around and go, boy, I wish we'd had the recording on. <laughs> right, exactly. So yeah, you know, I was just thinking, you know, some of the juice is lost a little bit when it's the second time around that we talk about things. So this is probably good. So what happened was um, this morning in my breathing time, I, I do... I don't do my breathing every day now because I don't need it, but I did do it every day mm -hmm. uh, for a while there. Okay. So now today I did it. And in that meditation of breathing time and it's specific, you, you can't get the sensations in your body when you're just meditating without doing the breathing. So that's why I'm just parsing it that way. The Lord showed me something unique now this is my revelation for the first time all y'all may have known this already but berlin didn't so right okay so free space here to be you full out and i just want to remind our audience when we do this there is a a risk of being naked in front of the public and it it we feel the risk nevertheless we do want to do this so that you can join in and you may hear something that increases your intimate walk with God. And that's what we're all about. Right. Mm -hmm. And again, Donna, I so appreciate you because I don't have a friend that I would say something like this to. And so that's why I started the conversation with, oh my gosh, you know what happened to me this morning? <laughs> mm -hmm. And I was like, oh. okay, well, here we are. Let's, let's, let's turn <laughs> the recording and see what happens. So, okay. okay. So, so we love you, Berlin, go. Yeah, go. You. So, <laughs> So typically I work through my body, soul, and spirit during my breathing. And I bless my body as I'm starting to um, get, um, feel the tingling of the breathing and feeling the energy. And I, and I send the frequency of heaven through body. And then I release as I'm breathing out, I release things from my soul and I breathe in truth about what the Lord says about me, those kinds of things. But when it was in my spirit time this time, this is when I typically sit in father's heart or in that, you know, in science would say it's the quantum field of infinite possibility, whatever, you know, however you want to picture father's heart this time today, I was like, okay, so I'm in father what's going on out there. And we were in the throne room nice. and I'm like, Oh, I am in father while he's on his throne and there's multitudes and multitudes of angelic choir singing, holy, holy, holy. And the four creatures are by the throne and the 24 elders are throwing their crowns and bowing down. And I'm like, oh, I've this, wow, because I was in him and, and I was just, you know, I was washing in his love for me, but then as I could experience that from him, it's like, oh my gosh, this is so amazeballs. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so that was my just crazy experience. I probably should press into it more, but that's my revelation for this morning. <laughs> wow. I think you will press into that more. Um, it's part of a journey. I mean, what you just shared was part of being spiritual and part of um just going with what's happening it, and only you weren't doing it in the physical realm you were in the spirit realm right through you 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 as a child of god in jesus christ operate through that door mm -hmm. and then and and you had an experience an encounter i believe that this is what makes the difference between what we do as christians and sons of god in jesus christ and other religions I believe other religions probably have their own spiritual stuff, but I really can't go there. I don't even have, I'm not, I'm not um, validated to talk about it because I just know one and I know what I know. And I'll tell anybody that wants to hear, if you want to get in the presence of God, he'll meet you every need. Yeah. And, it's, and it's a spiritual experience right there, but you come out of it to walk in the rest of your physical life feeling so um, loved or supported or met 
Mm, and, yeah. And, and yeah. after, after that was done, I was just in that moment for quite a while and I had returned my breathing to normal and I was just in that moment. And so then I started to think about it and I'm like, wow, could I be, cause we are, we're in two places at once. Right. So mm -hmm. I am in father while he is sitting at the head of my boardroom table as my CEO. So then I was saying, okay, so let me experience both at one time in father and sitting at the table next to him getting strategy. I'm like, oh, wow. And then, you know, he is my healer. So I'm in him and I'm being treated by him. I'm like, oh. Think of all the names of God that represent oh. characteristics and his character. And, and think about sitting in each one of those names. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It just that it, it there's so there's endless opportunity there. There's endless revelation available there. Right. Um, right. Yeah. And how many times have we been in the throne room just worshiping or we're or we read about or hear about someone else's experience of being in the throne room or even read about it in the Bible, you know, John's experience and and then to be inside father during that I'm like oh wow this is this is like intimacy beyond beyond right <laughs> yeah it's sometimes hard to experience i mean it's, i'm sorry it's sometimes hard to explain this it, it's very hard to explain to to someone that's not really done it yet but i would i would encourage you i i can remember when i had never done it i had never perceived how to do it and it took one person telling me, um, you can do this, do it now. And I did it. And so if you're wondering, what are they talking about? We're talking about stepping into heaven is a good way. I like to say it, stepping into my spirit through Jesus. This is not soul realm emotions. This is not intellectual anything. This is my spirit connecting to the spirit of God through Jesus, the door and me stepping in to see what my spirit knows, what my spirit can experience. And I was shocked that I was the, the desire of my spirit was met. I didn't, my soul probably wasn't even aware of it back then that my spirit had this desire to be connected like that, to have experiential encounters that my spirit could translate to my soul and my soul could go, I get that. I get that we're loved. I get that we're valued. I get that their heaven is active, you, you know, and, and my soul didn't know all that. And wow, just it, it, we have to talk about it with each other because we have to exhort and encourage one another that this is the way Jesus opened. And this is what he meant when he said, abide in me. Yeah. Yeah. So good. I have one more experience to show to to share with you that no, no. since we met. <laughs> so the other um revelation that I got was during a regular meditation time when I was actually pressing into my advisory board, which I'm doing on Monday mornings now. And this is my advisory board in heaven, just to be clear. And I was very aware during the whole interaction, or at least toward the end of the interaction, I was very aware that my I was behind my spirit. It was it was a bizarre feeling, but I knew that like I I really wanted to be sitting at the conference table and talking and, and interacting with everybody and looking and seeing them from that view, but I was behind. And I could tell my spirit was there and she was getting all of the strategy and the information. And, and I was kind of back behind her and it was almost like um, there was like a taffy kind of a substance connecting us. So I was, you know, tangentially connected to what was going on, but I couldn't quite see. It was like a veil and I could, you know, I was like, ah, a little foggy and oh wow. Well, I, yeah, I was like, I, I hope she gets it. Well, I have to trust that she, she got all of the strategy that they were telling her. And in the moment that I need it, I just told her, um, please tell me in the moment, you know, just like I, I talked to my angels, 
to order my steps and put the things in front of me that I need to see and keep distractions far from me. Well, I was talking to my spirit that same way too. I said, well, when it comes up and, and you need me to do something, please let me know because I don't, I didn't hear that. I'm just making it clear to you that I, I don't have. So was that your soul that you saw tethered to your spirit, your soul I, person? I think so, because my soul was the one who was understanding what was going on, which is right, right. It has to be translated to the soul, especially in this realm, because we are citizens, right? Um, Yeah, to me, hearing that I would go, well, that is awesome. You've been, you've been, you've become aware suddenly of how tethered your soul is to the spirit man of you. And how the spirit man of you is growing and interacting and you can trust him. Mm-hmm. Okay, boy, there's a can of worms we could open. What if we have parts of our soul that doesn't trust our spirit? Oh, oh dear. Yeah, that's, uh-huh. that's a huge. That's prayer work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. But it just, it occurred to me that all of the time, well, maybe not all, but a lot of the time that I have been trying to operate in the spirit my spirit was fully engaged my spirit saw it clearly like as if you're in the room and touching things and 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 it was my soul who was like groping around in the dark and not and only seeing shapes and shadows and a bit of color and you know not seeing things clearly and I realized that that if I can push my soul closer in then I'll be able to to see more clearly like my spirit does to engage yeah to engage I think that uh that's a a wonderful explanation of that because people do struggle sometimes you've mentioned that yeah for me it um I have to get really still I have to still I have to get my body really still which you said you had this in a in a moment of meditation usually you're still in meditation Mm -hmm. um my body has to get really still um, I find that once it's begun, the engagement, I can move my body more, but to get it, the ball rolling, so to speak, it helps me to be really still. Yeah. Um, me too. Me too. And my engagement, I also find that my spirit is very happy to wait on Papa's kingdom realm to appear in front of it. Whereas my soul is like, where are we going? What are exactly. we going to see? Yeah. Oh, who- here are we going to meet somebody and i'm just like hush just hush give 10 here (laughs) 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 oh my gosh yep yep (laughs) so there (laughs) and getting my soul to let my spirit do what my spirit is very capable of doing now that my spirit is activated by the holy spirit um yeah. Now, sometimes my soul will, you know, after she's chastised, she'll peep up and she'll go, well, I'm still here. And I'm like, I know you are, honey. And now let's engage together. And I I find that, and I don't know if this language helps anybody or not, maybe it makes it too cloudy, but the canvas of my imagination is my soul realm giving permission to my spirit to translate what it is experiencing through that canvas. And so to me, I identify the canvas of my imagination as um, a two-sided thing that can be written on it by my soul. It can be written on it by my spirit, but in an intentional engagement with heaven, I'm allowed, my, my soul is set down a little bit to allow my spirit to translate onto the canvas of the imagination. Then my soul can pick it up and go, okay. Um, my ears work that way too. And so my soul ear has to calm and sit down. So my spirit ear becomes um, more engaged with the vibrations going on in that realm. Yeah, I love that. And And then every once in a while, you know, Holy Spirit will lovingly instruct. And I'll never forget the day he told me, heaven is always talking. Like, he was like, come on, heaven is always talking. Heaven is full of sound. And I'm like, soul, did you hear that? (laughs) And so you can't hear because your soul's so busy talking. (laughs) so it's good point 
Yeah. And it is I, it wait, a lot of practice. Go ahead. I just want to say to, to our audience out there, it is a lot of practice. It it doesn't happen overnight, but it does happen. Um, and if you try and flounder, do not give up. You made a great little toddling step right there. And 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 I'll pat you on the back and give you a big hug and say, good job. Because yeah. it takes a little bit of time to practice. Um, and all of that came after I dealt with the spirit, the evil spirit of fear, and just basically had a conversation where me and Jesus stood with a big warring angel in front of that spirit. And I said, you are a whelp to me. <laughs> I am a son of God in Jesus Christ. And I'm not listening to you about this anymore. Shut up. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that because that just came up with I was already thinking about a client because she was actually has a very good relationship with Jesus, but has, is doing the baby steps, like you just said, mm -hmm. toward father. So mm -hmm. hers is a little bit similar, but different, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But with that same client, she mentioned that she's heard coaches and I have two who say, oh, don't get rid of your fear. It's important to, to help you operate, to help you motivate you. And to me, I say, I think I know where they're coming from. However, perfect love casts out fear and we're supposed to be love. Therefore, I say, go ahead and get rid of the fear and recategorize that thing that's motivating you. Is it nervousness? Is it, is it anticipation? Is it anxiousness? It's not necessarily fear as in the, the big kahuna fear. It's just some little a little, um, and what came to me just now is like a, a, a hair on your skin that feels something. And it's just like, it's just a little hair that just kind of like, oh, 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 something's going on here that I want to either move toward or move away or however you want to make decisions from that. But I don't think that we need to get rid of fear because I mean, I do think we need to get rid of fear because it, we're supposed to be love. Yeah, so fear is a frequent and the evil spirit of fear yeah. will prevent you from doing exactly what Jesus opened the door to. Right. Um, we should probably do a whole. Oh, I was just going to say, we could talk I about know hours, how to get rid of that fear, but yeah. I am not going to let an evil defeated kingdom stand between me and experimenting in the heavenlies that Jesus paid for with his life. Exactly. And we did do a whole, a whole episode on experimenting. Right. And so yeah. some of it, you know, you just, everybody listening out there may go, oh yeah, I've dealt with that. Oh yeah, I've dealt with that. And there may be stuff that you have overcome and that's great. I have too. Don't let it, don't let it throw you. If this defeated kingdom that this, the evil spirit of fear operates from tries to, you know, stop you or, or because the evil spirit has a voice and that voice unless you analyze like you were just saying is it anxiousness is it anticipation is it nervousness is it in incapacity inability is it you know so you have to speak to yourself no i know the truth jesus said i am the way he would not have said i am the way if the way were not meant to be trod upon or gone into it's just that when you were young, probably nobody explained that to you. Good nobody point. explained it to me. I want to circle back around to the revelation and the and the different the, the different ways that um, we get revelation in the spirit realm because we need to. We'll probably need to land the plane soon, but we did have I shared two different revelations and then you shared. So yeah. um, coming back to the reason that sometimes and we did have a conversation about this, but. Sometimes I'm, I'm like, okay, so what does that, what does that revelation mean in my 3d realm? How am I bringing earth, bringing heaven to earth in this moment so that earth looks like heaven? You know, what am I called to do? And you said something to me that made a lot of sense. I shared that, um, it with my clients, sometimes I tell them my revelations and then it means something really huge to them that shifts the needle for them so so even though it was just like oh wow dad this is really cool to me and i didn't really have a bring down 
point, I shared it with a client and they, and it made something to, to meant something to them and they had to bring down. Absolutely. Yeah. Organically salted the earth and caused the kingdom of God. Cause re the revelation came to you from the kingdom mm -hmm. caused the kingdom to multiply. So, right. and, and I use that word multiply because the kingdom never adds, it always multiplies. So what happens is you shared it with one and you're now sharing it again <laughs> on our broadcast, but you shared it with that client and she, it, she told you how much it impacted her. She will go and tell other people that are close to her when it comes right. up, she'll go, I heard this and my spirit leapt and went, uh-huh, I'm adopting that. That's multiplication in the kingdom. That's yeah. why we encourage each other. That's why we meet together and not forsake meeting together. It's for the purpose of this, because the the joint conversation and this and me hearing your engagement and relationship with with the Godhead and you're hearing mine, it, it causes growth and multiplication in the earth realm out of the kingdom realm. I love that. Yep. Very, very good. Okay. Well. You know, we might record another show today because I, I love having the, this conversation. But for this episode, let's wrap this <laughs> one up. Any last thoughts on having revelation, bringing it down, anything else? Anything mm -hmm. else you want to share? I want to share one little tidbit, yep. and that would be this. Don't get all wigged out if you get a revelation and you don't do anything with it that day because your spirit got it. Trust in the combination person that you are, spirit, soul, body, that it will come up again. Yahweh never releases something that will not return to him void. So you you have received it. If you if you didn't have time that day to do anything with it, guess what? It'll probably crop up again and you'll get more or you'll share it or you'll you'll think, oh yeah, I remember that. Your spirit man got it. Trust that. And I, I just want to tie that back to my the second revelation that I shared about my soul didn't understand, but I knew I trusted that my spirit did. And so you might not have even known that you got a revelation, <laughs> but the fact that you spent time in the heavenly realms, pressing into the deeper mysteries of God, pressing into intimacy with God, taking it to the nth degree, the fact that you did that let's just trust that your spirit did get something mm -hmm. and your spirit will translate it back to the soul. Yeah. And we bless you with that. Yep. We impart that freely. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, Donna, thank you so much. People can get a hold of you at dwellhouse.net. Net. Yes. It's dot net. Exactly. And I'm writing on my blog again. So, uh, I'd love to see you over there. <laughs> awesome. And over on spiritcenterbusiness.com, I have a free business assessment and some other stuff in the store, resources that you can go check out over on spiritcenterbusiness.com. Okay, you guys, we will see you. We love your comments. Uh, we love you to like, share with your friends, subscribe wherever you're seeing or hearing this podcast. All right, until the next time, take it to the nth degree. Bye-bye.